I'm very grateful to God for giving me another opportunity to so pretend over another matriculation ceremony of Christland University, the fourth matriculation ceremony and the second for me as a vice chancellor. And I thank God because one can see improvements between 2018 and now. So I thank God. To ensure that we train them in a way that they would break their limits. They would be proud to be associated, to be students of Christland University. Um, because you don't just abandon that faith. They are our students, so the primary goal is to train them to be world-class citizens, so to give them that platform to be trained as such. And then for Christland University, it's, this is not all of it, but last year we we didn't have accreditation. This year we have accreditation. What is the plan for the upcoming years? We want to expand. We want to run more professionally based programs, standing on the past accreditation. Oh, we had only computer science. What other programs can we run under computer science? So we're, we're planning to expand computer science to include cyber security and software engineering. All right, we have microbiology, we have biochemistry. What other thing can we do? We can do something like biotechnology. We are eyeing those programs and working hard to get them on board because that will increase student intake. Again, we are planning to begin with baby steps towards having a college of medicine. And our baby steps include bringing in programs such as nursing, public health, um, medical lab science, which are health-related programs that people can run, and then build on different departments in basic medical sciences so that in a short period of time, we can start a full-blown college of medicine and health sciences and related programs too, if possible, uh, pharmacy, you know, as the days go by. So, it should be my dream, God keeping us alive, that by next year during our matriculation, we should matriculate students in other programs that are not existing today. Yes, we have a, a, a social responsibility to make impact to the community where we, where we are based. So it's not enough telling students abstain from drug abuse. Make them ambassadors themselves. Let them, give them opportunity to have a voice to also try their own uh, potentials in tackling this societal menace. It has become a public health problem. So the answer is yes. Apart from preaching to the students in code to avoid substance abuse. I mean, you can see the posters and billboards around the university, no to drugs, you see things like that. We want to take it beyond that. And one way we are doing it is by establishing a drug-free club, which we did during our orientation program this week. And we brought in people that are experts in anti-drug and substance abuse, people in Ministry of Health, pharmacists, NDLEA staff, volunteers, and other um, professionals to so come and talk to the students as, and the staff about the menace of drug abuse, including how they look. Some of us didn't even know. So based on that, uh, we formed the Drug Free Club, courtesy of Department of Criminology and um, Security Studies. So Drug Free Club 
has been launched this week and membership includes staff and students. We are going to, and another group, CADA, the Christian Against Drug Abuse Ministry, they were also here. All these groups are ready to partner with us, including Psychiatric Hospital Aru, so that this club can, first of all, um, tackle the issue of preventing drug abuse in the university and taking it outside to secondary school, to joints, to place clubs, to wherever we feel that um, is a hot spot for drug abuse or substance abuse. But like prevention is better than cure, even if in places that appear safe, could be churches, mosques, would we'll take our message there that is a no to substance abuse. So we are ready to take it outside. For the matriculating students, I encourage them to break their glass limits. Uh, they should go with that phrase, exceeding the norm. They should not be satisfied with matriculation. They should not be satisfied with the norm. They should work hard and break their limit so that they will be foremost graduates, world-class graduates, people of repute. So they should work hard, they should listen to the messages given to them today by the guest speaker, Mr. Sheer Alabi. He gave them examples, life examples of people who were ordinary, people who were actually appearing like failures, but through hard work and, and also smart work, they became foremost graduates, foremost professionals, making impact. So, no matter what they think are their challenges or limits, they should stand up and resist. It could be distraction from anything, from socials. They should break that limit. Anything that would cause a limit between them and excellent performance should be done away with. They should be focused. They should avoid vices. Avoid immorality, avoid um, any form of vice, avoid substance abuse, cultism, all the things that will make their journey elongated or truncated. Because we also have our the guidelines, which if they disobey, they have sanctions. And we took them through all of those this uh, week. So we, are, we encourage them to be focused, attend their lectures promptly, do the assignment. Pro That's the reason why they are here. We also encourage them to be innovative. Me, personally, I want to encourage them to be innovative. Innovators rule the world. I want them to be innovative no matter what they're doing. They should be creative and innovative. And they will be rewarded here. They will be rewarded when they graduate. To the university, I encourage all the staff and students to always focus on our mission and vision. We want to be a world-class university known for intellectual radiance and etc. We want to build an enabling environment. They should join hands with management, with the vice chancellor to create an enabling environment for our students to excel. They should teach them in the best way possible, not theory, garbage in, garbage out for the teachers. They should um, look at modern ways of teaching, active-based learning, team-based learning. We have all been asked to develop our individual pr uh, professional development plan, IPDP, so follow up. We have assigned students to all lecturers. They should parent the students. Let them feel like they have a father or a mother away from home. 
they should work in unity with the uh, management, with the vice chancellor to, to achieve our goal. Music at LagosLotus.com The government of Nigeria to support not only public universities but private universities. I realize that during accreditation we are all exposed to the same tools for accreditation. The tool you will use to accredit Krishna University, the same tool you will use to accredit University of Ibadan the same tool. So it would be good if funds like TED funds are also made available so that these universities will measure you know, up to the standard that NUC wants. wants. The NUC is doing very well. However, the government should also encourage private owners who are spending their personal resources to tackle access to build world-class citizens. I thoroughly believe they should be giving grants, giving financial support, or scholarship for many students to attend, even if you don't give cash.